Hello everyone, this is Pastor Sean from Christians Unite, and this is another edition of Reading Through the Bible. Today on Christians Unite Bible Readings, we're going to be reading 1 Peter chapter 5. The Flock of God I appeal to the church elders among you. I who am the elder myself, I am a witness of Christ's suffering, and I will have a share of the glory which will be revealed. I appeal to you, be shepherds of the flock God gave you, and look after it willingly, as God wants you to do, and not unwillingly. Do your work, not for mere pay, but for a real desire to serve. Do not try to rule over those who have been given in your care. Be an example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the glorious crown which will never lose its brightness. In the same way, you younger men must submit yourselves to the older men, and all of you must put on the apron of humility to serve one another, for the scripture says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves then under God's mighty hand, so that you will lift up in his own good time. Throw all your worries on him, for he cares for you. Be alert, be on watch. For your enemy, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Be firm in your faith and resist him, for you know that the fellow believers in the world are going through the same kind of suffering. But after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who calls you to share his eternal glory and union with Christ, will you to share his eternal glory and the union with Christ will himself perfect you and give you firmness, strength, and sure foundation. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Final greetings. I write you in this brief letter with the help of Silvanus, who I regard as a faithful brother. I want to encourage you and give you his testimony that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. The sister church in Babylon, also cho chosen by God, sends your greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet each other with the kiss of Christian love. May peace be with you, all who belong to Christ. So in this chapter, it's first talking about church leaders, that they need to um, teach the flock and protect the flock, but do it in a way that is in love. Also, it talks about younger men need to respect older men. So in life, um, a lot of times when younger men need advice, going to someone older is always a good idea because they've already lived through some of the things that you may be going through now and be able to give you sound advice on what you could do. So this would be wise. Um, and then also in this chapter, it's just talking about um, being humble. So we need to humble ourselves and show love to others and serve others instead of being proud of ourselves. And then finally, in the last section, it's a simple greeting to the churches that are in Babylon and other areas. Um, just a um, simple message to them. Thank you for listening to this chapter of Christians Unite Bible Readings. We will continue with chapter 4 next. 1 Peter chapter 4 Changed Lives Since Christ suffered physically, you too must strengthen yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever suffers physically is no longer involved with sin. From now on, then, you must live the rest of your earthly lives controlled by God's will, not by human passions. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what is heathen like to do. Your lives are spent in indecency, lust, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and disgusting worships of idols. And now the heathens are surprised when you do not join them in the same wild and reckless living as they do 
so they insult you, but they must give an account of themselves to God, who is ready to judge the living and the dead. This is why the good news was preached also to the dead, to who those who have been judged in their physical existence, as all men are judged. It was preached to them so that in the spiritual existence they may live as God lives. So, just clarification on this section. So, as someone that was not a Christian, if you were in that situation and you were living a life of sin and doing all sorts of things that it was listing, so if you were partying, going out and just uh, getting drunk and having a good time and doing terrible things, your friends that aren't Christians, when you become a Christian, you become foreign to them because you're all of a sudden going to say, no, I really shouldn't be doing that. And you're going to choose other things. So, so a lot of times what happens is they're like, oh, you're, you know, they'll make fun of you and say, oh, you're too good now. And oh, goody two shoe, or they'll use names like that. Now, that doesn't always happen, but sometimes it can now what we have to do is be strong and show them that just because you changed and you're doing good things doesn't mean that you can't have fun. Christians can have fun. You just have to find a way to do it um, differently than you did before. Good managers of God's gifts. The end of all things is near. You must be self-controlled and alert to be able to pray. Above everything, love one another earnestly, for love covers over many sins. Open your homes to each other without complaining. Each one, as a good manner of God's different gifts, must use for the gift of others for special gifts he has received from God. Whoever preaches must preach God's word. Whoever serves must serve with the strength that God gives to him. So then in all things, praise may be given to God through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So this is talking if God gifts us with something. So, for example, me having a background in the knowledge of religion and, and uh, having a degree in this, um, it's my passion to speak on here. So I'm using the gift God gave me to speak his truth. Now, if you're someone who is supposed to serve, then so you basically might be going to prisons or homeless shelters or other areas and, and sharing your time, uh, possibly money uh, to help other people. And now we should also be inviting people into our home, um, whether that be fellow Christians in the church or people in need, and sharing what we have with others. This is the way the early Christian church did things. Uh, we've kind of gotten away from that. Um, now we do help people still, but the way they did it in the, the New Testament, the early Christians... That's something that I think we really need to learn how to do again. Suffering as Christian. My dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful test you are suffering. As though something unusual were happening to you. Rather be glad that you are sharing Christ's suffering. So that you may be full of joy when his glory is revealed. Happy are you... If you are insulted, because you are Christ's followers. For this means that the glorious Spirit, the Spirit of God, has come down on you. None of you should suffer for being a murderer, or a thief, or a criminal, or for trying to manage other people's business. But if you suffer because you are a Christian, don't be ashamed of it. But thank God that you bear Christ's name. The time has come for the judgment to begin, and God's own people are the first to be judged. If it starts with us, how will it end with those who do not believe good news for God? As the scripture says, If it is difficult for good men to be saved, 
what will become of godless and sinful men? So then those who suffer because this is the God's will for them should, by their good deeds, trust themselves completely to the Creator, who always keeps his promise. So as a Christian, um, you will suffer persecution at some point. Uh, people may mock you when you try to share your faith. Uh, they may say, oh, you know, I don't have any need for that. And say that, you know, you believe in something that's mystical or something that's impossible. Um, this may happen. Now, in extreme cases, and typically this is in other countries that it's illegal, there's people that are still being put in prison and being hurt for being a Christ follower. So, just like the disciples, many of them were jailed, uh, even beaten for being Christians. And they praised God's name and rejoiced in their suffering. This is the example that we need to have and we need to be able to do. Now that takes incredible faith, but with the Holy Spirit, we can do it. So that's what we're talking about today, that this specific part of this verse is saying, be strong and courageous, even when there's storms. Thank you for listening to this chapter of reading through the Bible. We are going to be moving on to 1 Peter chapter 3 next. Chapter 3. Wives and Husbands. In the same way, your wives must submit yourselves to your husbands, so that if some of them do not believe God's word, they will be won over to believe by your conduct. If you will not be it will not be necessary for you to say a word, for they will see how pure and reverent your conduct is. You should not use outward aids to make yourself beautiful, as in the way you fix your hair, or in the jewelry you put on, or, or the dresses you wear. Instead, your beauty should consist of your true inner self, the ageless beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great value in God's sight. For in this way, the devout women of the past, who ho hoped in God, used to make themselves beautiful, they submitted themselves to their husbands. Sarah was like that. She obeyed Abraham and called him my master. You are now her daughters if you do good and are not afraid of anything. Your husbands, also in the living with your wives, you must recognize that they are the weaker sex and you should not treat and you should treat them with respect. For they all also will receive together with you God's gift of life. Do this so that nothing will interfere with your prayers. So in this section of chapter 4, the main point that this is trying to say is that husbands and wives should mutually respect each other. Um, the Bible says that the husband is the head of the household. So the woman should respect that, but the man should also respect the woman as well. This is really important to know, especially in this day and age, that men and women should be equal and we should mutually be respecting both parties. Suffering for doing right. To conclude, you must all have the same thoughts and the same feelings. Love one another as brothers, and be kind and humble with one another. Do not pay back with evil with evil or cursing with cursing. Instead, pay back with a blessing for a blessing is what God promised to give you when he called you. And the scripture says, whoever wants to enjoy life and ha have a happy day must no longer speak evil and must stop telling lies. He must turn away from the evil and do good he must seek peace and pursue it. For the Lord keeps his eyes on the righteous and always listens to their prayers. But he turns against those who do evil. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you should suffer for doing what is right, how happy you are. 
Do not be afraid of men, and do not worry, but have reverence for Christ in your hearts, and make him your Lord. Be ready at all times to answer anyone who asks to explain the hope you have the hope you have in you, but do it with gentleness and respect. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are insulted, those who speak evil of your good contact conduct as followers of Christ may be ashamed of what they say. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if this should be God's will, than for doing wrong. For Christ himself died for you. Once and for all he died for sins, the good man for bad men in order to lead you to God. He was put to death physically, but made alive spiritually. And in his spiritual existence, he went and preached to the imprisoned spirit. These were the spirits of those who had not obeyed God when he waited patiently during the days of Noah was building the ark. The few people in the ark eight in all, were saved by the water. The water was a figure point into baptism, which now saves you not by washing off bodily dirt, but by the promise made to God from a good conscience. Baptism saved you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone to heaven and is in the right side of God, ruling over all the angels and heavenly authorities and powers. So this section is telling us that we need to be good. We need to have pure thoughts and speak in love and follow the example of Jesus. Now, we're never going to be as good as Jesus because he ultimately is the only one without sin. That is why his sacrifice uh, was enough. So we need to know That he is the only way. And that he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Thank you for listening to this edition of Christians Unite Bible Readings. We will be back again tomorrow with topics.